We bless the Lord for his mercies and grace this far. We are not the best, but we are the remnants of grace. My name is Beatrice Waithaka. I know we might have visitors, and I'm born again this afternoon. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, today is our last Sunday at Shiloh Worship Center. Pastor Brown forgot to say. So next Sunday, don't come here. They know, Rapture Itakwe ime fanyika. But this is our last Sunday at Shiloh Worship Center. We'll meet here the first Sunday of 2024. And I believe none of you will found missing. We'll be found here. Sunday and the next Sunday we'll meet at the main campus. For our visitors, main campus is across the road. That is our, our main campus. So we'll meet there on Sunday and also the other Sunday. And then we still meet there for our crossover, telling 2023 goodbye, ushering 2024 because of the grace of God. This morning, I want to bring the word of God. And our text comes from the book of Psalms 27. Psalms 27, verse 4. Psalm 27, verse 4. This was a prayer of David. After he had seen so many things and gone through a lot, he made this prayer. And he said, the title of my message is, One Thing I Desire. That is the title of my message. One thing I desire. And David had so many things he could have desired, but he singled out only one thing. And he said in, the, in Psalm 27 verse 4 that one thing I have desired of the Lord, not from my people, not from, my, from the authority that was, he was ruling, but he said one thing I have desired of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To do what? To behold the beauty of the Lord. That means our Lord is very beautiful. If you can behold something that, that is beautiful, it is our Lord. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. Friends, this is life. And life has so many challenges. And unless you make a, a, a decision, like David, you say, one thing that I desire, because there are so many things that you can desire. The word desire, it, it is used in the Bible 181 times. 181 times the word desire. 62 times in the New Testament. And 119 in the Old Testament. So desires are good, but it all depends what you desire. David desired to dwell in the house of the Lord that he might be saved from the enemies that surrounded him. Even you want to submit to you this morning that you have enemies. The enemies not only of your flesh, but the enemies of your soul. And David knew the only place I can be saved from my enemies, it is in the house of the Lord. He found himself in the house of the Lord because he knew one thing. In the house of the Lord, I can behold his beauty. And number two, I can inquire from the Lord. Whom do you inquire from, friends? Where do you... Which beauty do you behold? David knew. And you know David was a king. He had, so, he had seen so many things. He had seen the best women, the most beautiful women, even marrying a daughter of the king. But he singled out all those things and said, one thing I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord. To behold his beauty and to inquire in his temple. We are living in times people that people are inquiring from all sources of life. Somebody tells you that I'm going to Meru because I heard in Meru there's somebody who can foretell me my future. My prayer is, as we come to the end of this year, make a decision. Inquire only one thing. When you go that one thing, in that one thing, has everything that you need in this life. There is the best husband, the best wife, the best children, the best health, promotions, everything that you desire, it is in that one thing. Matthew 6 says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not second, not third, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and the rest. What are the rest? Is all the other things that you desire. David knew 
if I can only desire one thing, that one thing, and then I, 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 then I sink after it. We desire so many things, friends, but we never seek after them. Something precious, you must seek it. David knew that this one thing I must seek after. And seeking this thing, it is very costly. Even salvation is very costly. People say that it is very cheap. When you got born again, you say the confession prayer. From there, the journey began. Sustaining in salvation, or maintaining salvation, it is very costly. But you decided to take one thing. And David knew that. That I inquire from the Lord. He's the best counselor. You can never go wrong when you inquire from the Lord. David had what it takes. And he knew one thing. He didn't say, give me the best estate. Give me the best castle. Give me the best city. No, he said, I desire only one thing that I dwell in your house. And that is the cry of the Lord this morning. What do you desire? You that have been created in the image of God, what do you desire? You desire so many things, but he's saying, I wish you could know. You desire only one. Desire me. And after desiring me, seek me, and you'll find me. When I see you. To dwell in the house of the Lord, that was his desire. The Bible says that, the commentary says that, those are the, the, the times that David was not the same, the times that David was living, this is, it's now like now, the time that we are living now. In the house of the Lord, there were courts, courts in Kamanyumba, there were courts, and every priest had a court, had a, had a court in that house. So David was saying, if at all I can give, be given one court in the house of the Lord, that I will not move outside, I will remain in the house of the Lord. When I wake up in the morning, I leave my court and go into the house of the Lord, and I'll be safe from my enemies. Friends, we mingle with the people in Matatus, in the estate, wherever we are, and you know you need the cover. You can only get a cover when you purpose to dwell in the house of the Lord. And that is what David knew. Because you don't know who we're sitting next to in that matter. Maybe that man you're sitting next to has a gun. He's on a mission. And he can decide to finish you because you look suspicious. I want something to you this, after, this morning. That you need to dwell in the house of the Lord. David knew. He can ask for the biggest army. He knew he can ask for a city. For, he can say, I need that. Jakaranda said, it belongs to, it don't belong to me because I am the king. But he knew one thing, Jacaranda and Lavington and the other estate shall come to an end. But the only thing that's going to remain is me dwelling in the house of the Lord. That's why he said, I desire one thing, not two things, one thing. He never said, I desire a wife. He had wives, not even a wife. He had wives. He had children. He had what it takes. But he said, one thing. I desire that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. To behold this beauty and to inquire in his temple. You can never go wrong in this house. In Psalms 122 verse 1, the same David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. David knew the secret what is your secret? When friends tell you, let us go, where are you going? There are so many places to go. They can take you to an beer. Let's go to the bar. I know you are born again. You're not going to drink. But I will drink beer while you take soda. And you follow suit. Where are you going? What is, what, what, what is the secret of your heart? That I know one thing that I've made my mind. That this one thing I inquire. And this one thing I will seek after. Those are two different things. Yes, you, will, you, you, you desire, but you seek. Most of the things that we need can only be found on our knees. You and prayer, you parted ways. You and fasting, you parted ways. But the Lord is saying this morning, seek me while I may be found. That one thing that you need, you must seek after it. When I saw Sifiwe, All God's children desire to dwell in God's house. Where else should they dwell? 
in the Lord's house, we don't go to visit. We don't go to pass by. We are not traveling through. In the Lord's house, we must dwell. We have purpose to dwell. Lodgings are there, even in Nairobi and wherever you come from. But nobody lives in a lodging. They come there on transition. You sleep, tomorrow you continue with the way you are going. But dwelling has a cost. And that's where the Son of God dwells. The Lord wants us to dwell in his house. How honestly David covered this prayer. And he said, this is one thing I have desired of the Lord. And which I seek after. If he were to seek after but one thing of God, this should be it. For this, has, for this he had at heart more than anything else. That is the heart of David. No wonder the Lord said, I have found somebody after my own heart. Because he knew that in the heart of David, there's nothing else he's seeking. There's nothing else he's after. He has only one thing, and that is seeking the Lord to dwell in his house. He desired it as a good thing. He desired it, of the, it from the Lord. And this was a gift or a token from God. Because he knew, if I can seek and find him, my story will end. Friends, the time that you are living now, before we go, we cross over to next year, these are very critical times. I was telling the Lord, all months are good in the calendar of human being. But there's only one month, the month of December, which is very bad. Ask me why. Because this, one, this month, the month of December, is when people backslide. Month of December. Is where girls are impregnated in the month of December. Is where marriages break in the month of December. Because we, we, we misuse this month. We, 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 we diverted from what the Lord purpose for us to enjoy this month. Because this is the best month according to the Lord's calendar. Because this is the month that our Savior was born. But because of our human being, because of our nature, and because of our desires, we came and shifted from what the Lord wanted us to be. And we became, we aligned ourselves with our own plans. This is my prayer. The 14 days that are remaining to the close of this year, tell the Lord, I want to walk with you better than the, the other weeks. I want to be closer to you. Hide me. When people are eating chapati, be on fasting. Tell the Lord, I, yes, I've eaten chapati for so long. And whatever it comes with it. But this year, I want to cross over with you. Because I need you intimacy walk with you. Because I know when I look back, my life has been in a mess. I've decided so many things. But these two that are remaining for this year. Allow me, Lord Jesus, to walk with you. The Lord told you, I want to hold your hand. But you said, no, I want to hold you. And the Lord gave you his hand. But along the way, before the, the, the 17th of December, you left his hand. Now you're just walking alone. But he's saying, these two weeks, allow me to hold you. Because when I hold you, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Purpose to dwell. Purpose to behold. Purpose to inquire from them. Before you take any step, ask the Lord, is it you? Can I go? Bible says the book of 1 Samuel that when David came back from, from war, he found that Ziglag had been touched and the wives and the children had been taken away. Bible says that David inquired from the Lord, shall I pursue? And if I pursue, shall I overtake? And overtake, shall I have them back? The Lord said, because you have heard me, now you can do what? You can go. Bible says, David inquired from the Lord. Where do you inquire? When things are tough, where do you inquire? David went. He was able to overtake them and to recover everything that belongs to him and to his army. Friends, we can only recover when we inquire from the Lord. We can only recover when we put God in the mix. Tell him, May I want whatever the enemy have it. He has said in the book of Joel that I'm going to restore all that the carcombs have eaten. But where are we? Where do we inquire? When people are saying how bad the economy is, you are in the front line. You don't depend on the economy of Kenya. You depend on the economy on heaven. 
But how can you know? And yet when people are singing, you are in the mix. Stand out among them. David singled out one thing and said, one thing. He had so many things to inquire, but he said, one thing. And that one thing brought a change in his life. One as if you were. He would dwell in God's house, not for the plenty of good entertainment was there, in the feast upon the sacrifice, nor the music and good singing that was there, but to behold the beauty. He did not purpose to dwell or inquire to dwell or desire to dwell in the house of, of the Lord because of the entertainment. And you know kings have been entertained, just as we, we are present in our nation. Kings have been entertained by the entertainment, the good sacrifices, whatever was in that house, one of the purpose for him to dwell. But you know one thing, I want to dwell so that I can behold his beauty and inquire from his temple. David said that he might have the pleasure of meditating upon God. And that's why he said, I want to inquire. You cannot inquire when you are silent. You inquire when you are talking. And we serve a God who talks back. When you give me space, God will talk to you back. But you know, we are in a marathon. We run with the words. When the Lord wants to speak to you, you've already taken off. But inquire and meditate in his temple. And I tell you, friends, our God still speaks even now. He's, because the antenna of heaven is still on, even though he's still speaking. But where are we to be spoken to? In Psalms 110, verse number 3, Psalms 110, verse 3, the Bible says, when you, go to, when you go to war, your people will serve you willingly. You are arrayed in holy garments, and your strength will be renewed each day like the morning dew. This is a secret that David knew, that when he goes to war, from, his, from the lost house, going to war, his strength will be renewed. We are running out of steam, friends, because we don't inquire. And you can only inquire from the house of the Lord. That's why people are saying, me, I wait upon the Lord, back and come back slide. The Lord had, but I'm going to hand her Sarah, where do you her Sarah? Because he's wait upon me, and I'm going to renew your strength. David knew that when he go to war, the people will serve him willingly because he'll be arraigned in holy garments. Because our God is a holy, a holy God. And your strength will be renewed each day like the morning too. David knew about the goodness in the beauty of the Lord. And he said in Zechariah 9.17, Zechariah 9.17, that how wonderful and beautiful they will be. The young men thrive on abundant grain. And the young women will flourish on your wine. He knew the beauty in the house of the Lord. He knew the holiness from the house of the Lord. That the young women will flourish on new wine. The harmony of all his attributes is the beauty of his nature. That is the beauty of our Lord. The harmony of his att attributes. It is, is in the beauty of his nature. With an eye of faith and holy love. We with the pleasure behold his beauty and observe more and more in it that is gracious and that is admirable. The Lord knew that whatever you need, whatever concerns your life on this earth that he has placed you, it is in his house. Therefore, there must be a connection between you and his house so that you can have whatever you want in this life. David knew that he might have the satisfaction of being instructed in his duty. When you pass to inquire from the Lord, this altar will inspire you. This altar will instruct you because the Lord knows. I've released five men and five ladies and I've empowered them with my grace. Friends, who empowers you when you go? When you are beaten by this life, up and down and center, who empowers you? The Lord knew. And David knew the only thing he can do is to inquire from the Lord. The Lord is asking this morning because he wants to hear, what will thou have to do with me? That's what he wants to hear. What can you do with me? What has thou has to do with me? That is what he wants to hear. Psalms 84 verse number 4. 
Psalms 84, verse number 4. The Bible says, What joy of, for those who can live in your house always singing your praises. Not murmuring, not complaining, but singing your praises. What joy. There are no words that I can express the joy that you have when you purpose to dwell in the house to inquire from the temple. What joy can you have from this house? Both in speaking to him and hearing from him. You speak to the Lord and then you wait for him to speak to you. You, you speak and then you hear from the Lord. In the book of Luke 10, 41 and 42. This is the time when Jesus went to, to visit the, the bereaved. His friend Lazarus had died. And he was said, he was called upon, he never came. But the time Jesus came, the sisters welcomed him. And they told him, if you are here, my brother could not have died. Jesus entered the house. And to these two sisters, remember, they were sisters to the, to, to, the, to the dead friend of Jesus. And one of them, by the name of Mother, was very busy. And he made, you know, when you come to my house, the first place, when you sit down, the, the next step, I'm in the kitchen. The same kid applies to, to, applies to these two sisters. And Mother had the guts to complain and told the Lord, why can't you tell my sister to come and help me? Remember, Jesus was alone. But Jesus, this is what he said. Luke 10, 14, 42. He said, but the Lord said to her, my dear mother, not mother, your mama, Marida, Marida, Marida is her name. My dear mother, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worthy being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Only one thing. Jesus echoed the words that David has said. That only one thing to die sick. Only one thing I desire. And Jesus told mother, Mary, have known the secret. She has discovered the secret to sit under my feet. Something that cannot be taken away. Friends, you are running out of steam because you want to please people. People walk away from you. There's only one thing that cannot be corrupted. Marriages are corrupted. And you cannot seek the Lord because you want to seek marriage. Mimi lazima niolewe. Sio lazima. Sio lazima. Lazima hii mwaka. And I know in the beginning of this year, we had resolutions for this year. And you're saying, no, it's only 14 days to the end of this year. And none of them has materialized. I want to submit to you this afternoon that those were your plans. That was your calendar. That was your timetable. The only thing that inquire from you, wants from you is that you seek him who has everything and you're going to have it. Therefore, the Lord told Martha, my dear mother, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worthy being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away. Mary sitting at Christ's feet to hear his word. Christ calls the one thing needful and the good part. Seek like David. Seek like, a mother, like Mary and you'll find it. Eve in the garden of Eden saw the tree of knowledge of good and evil as something to be desired. This is Genesis 3 verse 6. She saw it as something to be desired. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. Remember this. It was only pleasant to her eyes, not before the Lord. We fall in temptations because we follow the desires of our eyes. What you hear and what you see. But the Lord is saying, 
that the only one thing that cannot be corrupted, only one thing that cannot be taken from you is when you seek him. One thing. So she used to give to her husband who was with her and he ate it. That is where man fell. Man became poor because of eating. Some of us have separated from the the masses of God because of food. That you cannot fast. Now we are going to January. And you know we normally do 40 days in January. And you are saying, Sasa tena tufunge. Sasa tena. We don't have another January. Jeno disha pita. Sasa tena. It is optional. If you want to feed this man, we will see the outcome. If you want to feed the inner man, we will see the outcome. Nobody, nobody will tell you it is a must. It is by choice. We are commanded not to desire our neighbor's spouse, and yet many do. This is from the Bible, Deuteronomy 5.21. The desire. No coveting your neighbor's wife, and no lasting for his house, for his field, for his servant, for his maid, for his ox or donkey, either nothing that belongs to your neighbor. You are not supposed to covet or admire or want anything that belongs to your neighbor. Your neighbor cannot go to work because when the, your neighbor leaves to go to work, you, a man, not, not the ones who are here, that man goes into to the neighbor's house and makes that maid. The boy has said the maid. You make somebody's maid your wife. People said, you're not supposed to cover it. All these things that we do, we know very well that we are doing sin. But you say, si jashikoa. Twist or share jealous is water. But I want to submit to you this morning that to be your, 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 yourselves watchman. Watch yourself what you do and how you do it. We are commanded not to desire silver and gold. And yet many do. Deuteronomy 7.25. The graven images of their God shall you burn with fire. You shall not desire the silver or gold that is on them. Or take it unto you, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord their God. That you can do anything to get that silver, to get that gold. Bible is saying, do not, do not desire. And when he says do not, It has no option. It is do not. The children of Israel desired a king, a leader other than God. God's purpose from the beginning was he was wanted to be the king of the children of Israel. But because they lived in the world that we are living with you and me. 1 Samuel 12, 13. Now therefore, here is the king whom you have chosen. And God gave them Saul. And you know what happened to the children of Israel under the hands of Saul. God gave them soul. And take note, the Lord has set a king over you. God's desire was that he's going to rule the children of Israel, but they wanted to be ruled by a man they can see. During our ICC, Bishop Masinde said that when the angel told Mary, you are going to conceive and have a baby, Mary said, well, how will it happen? I don't know a man. But the angel said, you don't have to know a man. And I want to submit to you this afternoon. You don't have to have a king. Jesus Christ is your king. Can he rule your life? Can he be the the, the role of your life? Can he tell you not to go, not to do this and that? Can you make him your king? He wants to rule you. Because you have, he he has your eternity at hand. Can you let him rule your life? Job desired to reason with God. This is from the book of Job 13, verse number 3. The Bible says, But I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. And God came down. And you know what happened. The Lord told, told, told Job, Now, you want to argue with me? Now, stand before me like a man. You can never argue with God, friends. You can never argue with God, but you can reason with God. He says in the book of Isaiah, come, let us reason. To, not to we argue. Let, come, let us do what? Reason together. David desired one thing. 
But there's one thing that he never desired, and he came to his life. It was not the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye, nor the pride of life. After with Bethesheba covered those. Remember, this was somebody's wife. But David, in his own simplicity and the love he had for God, he fell into sin. And the enemy knew David is finished. But the Bible says in Psalms 51 verse 17, that a concrete heart and a broken spirit, who can despise? David knew the secret. Me and you, we fall into temptations because this is flesh. And you know these are two kingdoms. There's a kingdom inside and a kingdom outside. But the Lord knew. The moment you go before him and repent, he's faithful and just to forgive. First John 1 9, he says, if you repent your sins, I am just and faithful to forgive you. But whoever covers his sin cannot prosper. David knew, I have sinned because of the flesh. I have sinned because of the pride of my eyes. I have sinned. But he knew one thing, when I go before the Lord, he's going to forgive me. Remember, David did not have an estate, but David had a kingdom. A kingdom. You, you have a house that you drew from the love of God. The Lord loved you so, so much. He gave you a house. Up and, uh, maybe it is 10 by 10. And that alone, we were taught in the morning here by Pastor Paul, that pride, 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 the people that you work with, you, you don't know how pride comes. I got be to a Nebuchadnezzar syndrome. Nebuchadnezzar lifika mahali. For those who are here, because when my youth, the Nebuchadnezzar syndrome, pride chipped in slowly, slowly. And I tell you, friends, what happened? Nebuchadnezzar ate grass for seven years. Usinuze alikura anako kamuriwa, usinuulize. But Nebuchadnezzar ate grass for seven years because of pride. Bwana sifive. That is one thing David never desired, but it came across his life. He fell into sin. He slept with somebody's wife. He planned how this, the husband of this lady can be killed. And because he was a king, he was able to succeed. But one thing that he desired, it is a heartfelt, heartfelt desire to have a close and intimate relationship with God. Even that, Pastor Paul said in the morning, intimate walk with God. Maintain your intimate walk with God. The Bible says in James 4, 8, Draw near to God, and he drew, he drew near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Cleanse your hands. You cannot draw, draw closer to God with, the, uh, with unclean hands. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. To dwell is to live in the house of God all the days of your life, not to visit not to pass by. Here, nobody lives here in the physical. But in the spiritual, we ought to live in this house all the days of our lives. You dwell here. Whatever you need, whatever your family needs, whatever this nation needs, it is in dwelling in this house. When I see fewer. David desired a never-ending fellowship with God. Not a once-a-week fellowship. Not a once-a-week fellowship. He desired a never-ending fellowship with the God. Every day, you sleep born again, you wake up born again. And told, I told you a story upon this altar that one lady at the bus stop, let me use Mirema, she met a sister. Let me use my sister Wangeshi. I remember Wangeshi. When I see Fiwe, she said, Nimapema sana. And I thought, Nimapema Amen. So in the morning, you are not born again. So I meet you in the afternoon, you are born again. Friends, let us pass. Those are people who, who visit. But the people that dwell 24-7, they are born again. What you said yesterday, you can repeat it today. And you can say it tomorrow. If you purpose to dwell. How? Did David sort this one thing as I wind up? David sought this one thing 
honestly. Honestly. Not today and tomorrow you're not there. He sought this one thing honestly. <clears throat> Number two, he was determined. Therefore, he sought it determinately. I need only this one thing. And number three, he sought it successfully. Matthew 7, 8 says, For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This morning or this afternoon, what is your one thing in regard to to God that you are pursuing, diligent pursuing, that you are saying no matter how many days I remain to the end of this year, I started seeking this one thing in January. Now even today, 14 days to the end of this year, I'm still pursuing that one thing. What are you pursuing? Is it his love? Is it his grace? Is it his mercy? Are you actively pursuing a relationship with God? Are you pursuing righteousness, holiness, or even godliness? But ultimately, pursue God to have, an, any, to have any hope of ever finding him. We must pursue him in prayer. Pursue him in prayer. The only thing we should be desiring is a close and personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He didn't come and paid all that price so that you can own a house. He came and passed through all that he passed through so that you and him can live together in eternity. The other things are added. And the added will never go to heaven. The additionals will never go to heaven. What will go to heaven is a relationship with the God. You have desired many things as you began this year. Now the year is almost coming to an end. And the desires have, never, have not been met. And as I said when I began, some of us desired spouses. Others salvation for their loved ones. Others healing. Others children. Others promotion. And the list is long. All things are good. But they can be corrupted. David had seen all this, but he singled out one thing that became his desire. What is your desire this afternoon? As you look forward and backward from where we have come from, we have come from very far to look back. The remaining two weeks, what is your desire? Let's stand on our feet. A singer sang and said, my desire, my desire, my desire is to love you, Lord. Thank you, Joe. My desire, my desire is to love you, Lord. My desire, my desire is to love you, Lord. What is your desire this afternoon? We'll sing that stanza. Once, if you are here and you're not born again, that is where we begin to desire. Our desires begin when you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you can go nowhere because there is no any two way. It is only one way and the way to Jesus. There's only one way. My desire, my desire, my desire, my desire is to love you, Lord, my desire, my desire, my desire, my desire, my desire is to love you. You, Lord, my desire, my desire, my desire, my desire, my desire is to 
love you, Lord. My desire, my desire, my desire is to love you, Lord. My desire, my my desire, my desire is to love you, Lord. My desire, my desire, my desire, my desire is to know you. Oh, my desire, my my desire, my desire, my desire is to know you. Oh, my desire, my desire, my desire. says in the book of Luke 17 that the prodigal son asked the father to give him in his inheritance. One thing he knew is that when he's given his inheritance, he lived happily ever after. But that was his thought. Many of us have taken our inheritance from the Lord and gone to the world. And today you are living in regret. I wish I wish I never left the house of God. I wish I stayed in salvation. I wish I maintained my relationship with the Father. And the Lord is saying this afternoon, He is a merciful Father. You are there. You are living in regret. You are there. You compromised the one thing that you desired. You are there. You are telling the Lord, remember mercy upon me. The Lord is saying, I am here to renew my covenant with you. I am here to renew my love with you. I am here to renew my purposes with you. Are you there? You are telling the Lord, I would love to come back. I have to come back and pursue the one thing I desired, the one thing that I lost, the one thing that I forgot, the one thing that gave me joy. Are you there? You can raise your hand. We can pray with you. Are you there? Are you there? Lift your hand. Are you there? Are you there? Father, we thank you and we bless you. We commit and commit ourselves back to you, to your Father. We know where we've lost it. And because you are merciful God to your Father, we are coming back to the house of worship. We are coming back to where we belonged. We are coming back to you, Father, where we lost the desire that we had, the one thing that we had to your Lord. We are coming back to you. Receive us, Jehovah God, because there's no way we can have found peace. There's no way we can find joy apart from knowing you, whom to know is love eternal, and coming back to the house of worship. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.